What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to do another one of these little news roundup style videos, but it's mostly going to be about coronavirus, which has been sweeping through the world. The response in America is now starting to kick into overdrive as death tolls rise in places like Italy. Now the country music world and the music world at large is starting to really respond to the threat of coronavirus. So in today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the cancellations. I actually caught up with Jamie Lynn Wilson about what it actually looks like on the ground for an artist whose shows are being canceled. Also, I'm repping some new merch in this one. This design is one in the shop that you guys have really been enjoying. Regardless of your political affiliation, Fiddle and Steel are some candidates we can all get behind. These are in white and blue in the shop now, so if you want one of those, check it out, especially because this video is guaranteed, pretty much, to get demonetized as this is deemed a sensitive subject by YouTube. So as I'm sure you guys know, coronavirus is now at a stage where people are actually really, 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 really concerned about it. Grocery stores are running out of all of their soap and toilet paper, and hospitals don't have enough gowns or gloves or masks. Trump has now issued a travel ban to and from Europe. And the CDC is encouraging people to practice social distancing, not gathering in large groups of people as coronavirus cases pop up all over America. Now look, I'm a music channel. I'm not going to sit here and try and give you the latest, best, most accurate news. Go find out what's going on with coronavirus at some good reported article that's not mine. I'm going to be talking about kind of how this is affecting the country music world. And the main way that it's affecting the country music world is that all this spring, pretty much every single big event where there was going to be a large gathering of people in one place is getting canceled or at least postponed. I mean, between this and the tornado, a lot of people that we care about in country music are having a tough freaking month. First big thing that happened was about a week ago, South by Southwest, the huge music slash tech slash everything else festival in Austin, Texas was canceled, not postponed, fully canceled. That meant that a lot of artists and a lot of venues were no longer going to be having this huge revenue stream. According to reports, this is a projected loss for Austin of about $350 million in revenue. And South by Southwest as an organization had to lay off a third of their staff. And following that cancellation, there have been other major country concert decisions made as well. Stagecoach out in California has been postponed until October. The C2C Festival, Country to Country, which is a big English festival for country music, has been postponed as well. The Houston Rodeo is ending early, so if you were hoping to go see John Party play there, you're out of luck. Zach Brown has canceled the spring run of his shows. Dan and Shea have canceled the spring run of their shows. Blake Shelton has canceled the latest leg of his tour as well. The songwriter festival Tin Pan South, which always happens in Nashville, was canceled. And there are a number of other events where it's up in the air if these are still going to happen. I'm actually really surprised that the ACM awards, which are scheduled to occur in early April in Las Vegas, have not been postponed or that some announcement hasn't been made that they're going to be uh, changed or they're going to be done virtually the way a lot of college classes are doing. I just don't see them having all these people come into a little room in Las Vegas uh, all together. It doesn't, it, it's just not going to happen. There's no way it can happen. Kip Moore is one star that has actually posted to his Instagram that he is going to still go to Australia for the CDC, not CDC, the CMC Rocks Festival out in Australia. Um, I know that a lot of artists are choosing to not come or travel. I completely understand that. I respect that as to each its own. Me uh, and the guys though, we're choosing to trust the Australian health officials and saying that we are good to go. Everything is good. It's fine. We're coming, we are headed your way, and we're gonna try to give you the best fucking show we can. A few hours later though, that festival was called off as well. I think there's probably gonna be a million more updates that are gonna be happening every couple hours for the next few days. So I'm not gonna worry about getting everything in this video. I think you get the point. But I did wanna get an artist's perspective to take this out of the headlines and make it a little more human. So I actually reached out to Jamie Lynn Wilson, who is one of my favorite singers. She comes out of the Texas scene. I've talked about her on this channel a number of times before, including most recently in my video, The Avengers of Independent Country Music. She's absolutely awesome. She's going through a lot of cancellations right now of shows and festivals that she's booked for. So I thought it could be interesting to get her perspective about, you know, how do we support our favorite artists during this time? For you as like a working musician in Texas, are you experiencing a lot of cancellations right now? Well, I got one festival today canceled. Um, we just got the word like an hour ago. It was a, 
festival in Lubbock in the middle of um, April, and they said, nope, not happening. You actually caught me in the thick of it because that just happened. It's happening right now. Like, I'm okay. sitting here with my agent, and she's getting emails about venues canceling shows. Right, like, in real time. <laughs> wow. The thing that happens with, like, our size, you know, artists, is that the festivals are where are your anchor gigs. So that's where your money comes from. So, you know, I'm going to go out on the road with, with Todd opening shows, and, you know, that's not where that's not where I make money. But then I was going to come home, back to Texas, and play this festival in Lubbock and make some money. And you turned down extra and, dates. And right. I turned down extra dates. I turned down extra Todd Snyder dates in California for it. And now, like, I don't know. I don't know. When you sign up to play a show, is there any guarantee of pay that comes your way such that when it's canceled, do you get anything? Do you get some sort of consolation fee or anything like well, that? Well, there's usually a deposit for high, uh, for higher paying gigs and festivals. They'll send like a half deposit, but there's also a clause in the contract for a lot of the agencies. There's a clause, a pandemic clause. So, wow, a pandemic clause. You know, it's one of those things where, like, they're they're not con contractually obligated to to do anything because it's legit. I mean, we don't want Italy to happen here. Like, you don't want to have to be 15 people in a grocery store and you're out. You know, but man, it's like we are legitimately right now about to we're packing the suburban to go to Louisiana this weekend and. Uh, even those gigs were like, do you feel comfortable coming? I'm like, yeah, I need money. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, <laughs> like, I, you know, like, I pay my tour manager per gig. Like, what if we, if we don't have any gigs, then she doesn't get paid either. And, uh, and then the, you know, it trickles down so much, you know, to where, what are, what are we going to do? And I've got four small children and, you know, parents who are, not young and healthy adults, you know? And so it's so confusing right now that I don't have any, I've like all of a sudden right now, I'm like, oh my God, there's a chance that I will not have any gigs in April. Mm -hmm. What is that going to look like? Baton Rouge just canceled. Baton Rouge just canceled. Tomorrow's gig. No, Sunday. Sunday's gig. Sunday's gig just canceled. Wow. Real time. You're seeing it right now in real time. Yeah, for real. Jeez. <laughs> So for, for fans that we're going to see some concert, we're going to go to some festival, we're going to go see one of their favorite artists that, like, right. that are no longer going to do those and maybe want to support an artist, you see a lot of people on Twitter saying stuff like, now's the time to buy merch, now's the time to buy music. Is that right. true? Does that help? Kind of what would you I say? I mean, of course that helps. You know, of course it helps. Like, if there's an extra 25 bucks in my PayPal because somebody wanted to buy a shirt, like... But also, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say, now, go buy all of my things because poor me. You know, everybody's industry is getting affected. Right. Everybody's industry. So, right. like, I can't be like, oh, poor me, I can't go do my performance job, you know, and the oil industry here in Texas just tanked. You know, like, that it's hard for me to say, I know you're having a hard time with your money too, but give it to me. So, I don't know, maybe if you are in an industry that, that maybe isn't affected, or, I don't know. I think I I'm in the one that industry that's not affected. You I literally know? think I yeah. might be the one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the internet. It's people who, who survive, you know, get their, get their money from the internet. Maybe it's the tech jobs. Like, tech job people, go buy my merch. <laughs> there you go. Well, I'm sorry. I don't think there's like a, I think you're right that a lot of people are affected. I think there's not a clear solution here. A friend told me this morning, there is no, there is no treating this as a society without an economic cost. It's just going to happen. And I was yeah. like, that's pretty freaking sobering. There are definitely, you know, people that we as a healthy society should protect. Yeah. And that's what we're yeah. doing. The, the ones that are nice and healthy are protecting the vulnerable and that is the right thing to do and it'll and and if we do it the right way then it'll pass mm -hmm. you know and then we'll get back to normal or whatever try to build it all back up again but um you know this is the thing about living in a in a privileged 
a civilized society is a, it's a thing that we can do. Thanks to Jemmy Lynn Wilson for being willing to do that with me. I really appreciate her perspective. And let me shift tones really aggressively and cover two other stories that I thought are really interesting. They're both about some country music legends. The first is that Ray Wiley Hubbard, you know, who you might recognize as one of Eric Church's favorite songwriters that he actually name drops in Mr. Misunderstood. He just signed a deal with Big Machine Records. And you're seeing a bunch of kind of guys from the Texas scene and a bunch of really respected songwriters being pumped about this on Twitter. And I'm curious too. It's a very interesting direction for the label most famous for having signed Florida Georgia Line, Thomas Rhett, and Taylor Swift. The other big piece of news is that Travis Tritt is planning a comeback. He's recording a new album with Dave Cobb that is expected out sometime in the future. And it's kind of neat to see, you know, Travis has been sort of returning into the pop culture fray, not only being a judge on the show Real Country last year, but appearing on the Hot Country Nights new single, Pick Her Up. And now he's recording an album of his own. And as the kids say, you love to see it. So that's it for me, guys. That's all I'm talking about in today's video. I hope that y'all stay safe and keep washing your hands and that you don't let fear run your mind, but at the same time, you're smart. And while I will not see you at a concert for a while, I will see you guys soon with another video. Mm -hmm.